one plus z over k. I'm wondering, is this still an infinity boy or is this an infinity grill? What's the gender of this thing right here? Are you brave enough to identify the gender of this mathematical notation? I dare you. <laughs> Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It's once again time for Papa's series on weird as fuck functions that you are probably never going to use in your daily life ever again, but it's still fun to watch Papa derive all this shit that you can use to uh, get rid of your spare time. Yeah, that's what I like to call the series right here. And today we are going to take a look at our gamma function once again, and this right here is the Weierstrass definition. And our goal today is to kind of backwards engineer this Weierstrass definition to the Euler definition of the gamma function. And we know that the Euler definition by now is exactly equivalent to our um, integral definition of the gamma function. So by the transitivity of our equivalence relation, namely the equal sign, we also are going to notice that this Weierstrass definition is exactly equal to our integral definition. And this boy right here is bloody epic because you see this right here is the gamma function and this right here is gamma the euler mascheroni constant so two absolutely great things in analytic number theory combined in one formula so oh, gucci bloody gucci my boys and we are going to dive right in so it really doesn't quite matter if you go upwards from the euler definition of the gamma function or you backwards engineer this thing right here back to our Euler definition, so it doesn't quite matter. And also you see we have one over gamma right here and shit is multiplicative on this side. So as long as this isn't equal to zero and it isn't, it's the gamma function, it's strictly positive and the positive rears, for example, it's never going to be equal to zero. Well, you can actually multiply both sides by gamma and then divide both sides by this stuff and yeah, everything works out nicely. You can kind of extract your gamma function from it once again. So let's go ahead and get started. At first I would like to rewrite stuff a little bit. Instead of e to the something, let's use the exp notation for our purposes because stuff is going to get a bit messy and I don't want to have infinite sums up here in the exponent. That's, that's weird. So that's actually equal to z times exp of. And I want you guys to notice something. The gamma function is nothing but, well, the limit definition of the difference of two diverging series, namely the limit as n approaches infinity and I'm going to refer to this limit as always as capital L then of the harmonic series, the harmonic sequence minus the natural log of n times z. Okay, this is what we have. And then times this infinite product from k equals to one to infinity of one plus z over k. I'm wondering, is this still an infinity boy or is this an infinity grill? What's the gender of this thing right here? Are you brave enough to identify the gender of this mathematical notation? I dare you. <laughs> and then we have exp of, okay, this is nothing but negative z over k. Okay, I've rewritten this in a fancy way and I want you guys to consider we are going to let the limit as n approach infinity go to infinity. So we are going to take this limit right here. We also have another infinity up here, this. Why not take the limit as n approaches infinity also on this infinite summation? Okay, so basically we are going to get rid of this infinity, put an n right here and take the limit right here. Our exponential function is continuous, meaning we can track the limit to the outside, to the front of the exponential function. And now it's a matter of convergence stuff if those limits actually exist. But if this limit actually exists, we can take those two limits and track them to the front, okay? Do a limit Hadoken right here, okay? That's something we can do. And well, we know that our gamma function exists, so why not do the limit Hadoken right here and bring all those limits to the outside, okay? That's something we're going to do now. Then we are going to end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of z times exp of, okay, we have z times the harmonic numbers minus z times the natural log of n. That's a nice looking n. I should write it like this as always. Then I wouldn't really um, have to think about, yeah, k looks alike 
to n. Okay, and then we have the infinite product from k equals to 1 to n. Not the infinite product, it's the finite product now of 1 plus z over k times exp. Okay, so you see shit is a billion in the real numbers, for example, meaning the product of those two things multiplied together is the product of this thing times the product of the exponential function right here over all those k's. Also, I want you guys to consider the functional equation, which is defined by the exponential function in the real numbers. Namely, if we have exp of a plus b, we have that this is exp of a times exp of b. Okay, so e to the a plus b is nothing but e to the a times e to the b. Meaning, if we multiply two exponential functions together, we are going to end up with the sum up here. Meaning, if we have a finite product right here of exponential functions, then we are going to have the finite sum of those arguments. So this is actually equal to exp of this finite sum running from k equals to 1 to n. Okay, I, I have to get used to this n right here. And then this is nothing but negative z over k. I hope you agree with me that this is true. Now, I want you guys to consider something else. Okay, um, we have split this up. M maybe using k isn't good right here because we, well, I don't want to get this confused by this product. So let's say i, okay, it really doesn't quite matter which index you are going to use right here. If we bring this negative z to the outside, that's just a constant, okay? Let's bring negative z to the outside. Then we have this sum right here running from 1 to n of 1 over i. The thing is, this right here are nothing but our harmonic numbers. Okay, cool. That's our harmonic sequence right here. And like I said, if we have this stuff, we are going to let it run over a different index. We can actually bring this to the outside and then we have exp times exp. Meaning we can bring this exp, this exponential function together and just add those arguments together, okay? So <laughs> that's fucking cool. So we have L, the limit of z times exp of, and that's why I distributed everything into everything. Then we have z times the harmonic numbers minus z times the natural log of n. And then we have negative z times the harmonic numbers. Oh, here's where the magic happens. Okay, stuff is going to cancel out big time right here. And then times this finite product from k equals to 1 to n of 1 plus z over k. Okay, coolio, coolio. And now you see we have negative z times natural log of n. We can use the natural log properties to bring this negative z as an exponent to the inside. Okay, so we have negative z right here. If we take the exponential function of the natural log, it's just going to be this argument itself. So overall, this is the limit as n approaches infinity of z times, okay, this is going to be n to the negative z power times this product right here from k equals to 1 to n of 1 plus z over k. <laughs> this has reduced pretty nicely and now I'm going to make use of a little trick that we have derived when actually deriving our Euler definition of the gamma function. So we are just one step away of being actually done. So that's pretty cool. I want you guys to consider n once again. And we said that we can express n as nothing but 2 over 1 times um, 3 over 2 times dot 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 up until, okay, we said it's of the form, well, um, n over n minus 1. We can put it like this, n over n minus 1. But then you would have to let your index run from 1 to n minus 1, okay? But we also said that's actually equal to n plus 1 over n. It's the very same expression. And, and in the limit, it does work out. So, so in the limit, nothing really changes. We are ending up with the same thing. So to the z power, or to the negative z power in this case, because we have n to the negative z power, then that's actually equal to, well, a finite product running from k equals to 1 to n in this case of k plus 1 over k. 
Okay, this does work out nicely. So on the first term, we have two over one, nice. And on the second term, three over two. Hey, <laughs> that actually works out quite nicely. And in the limit process, we can actually write it like this. And don't forget your two negative set power, but since stuff is multiplicative and we can drag this exponent to every and each term, we can just put it like this. Okay, I hope you agree with me that this is true in the limit. Meaning, overall, we are going to end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of z times our finite product from k equals to 1 to n. Now, I want you guys to notice we are going to let it run over the same index. So, we can actually drag this whole product to the outside. That's something that's work, that works out with products. So, products are really nice if you're not dealing with division by zero. And then we have 1 plus 1 over n. So you see this is nothing but um, not n, k, but this is um, k over k plus 1 over k, k over k is just 1. So I don't want to mess up the index right here. To the negative z power times this chunk. 1 plus z over k. And don't forget this right here in the limit is nothing but our 1 over gamma of z, meaning if we take the reciprocal on both sides, so raising everything to the negative one power, we are going to end up with gamma of z is nothing but, well, the limit as n approaches infinity, that's new n right here, <laughs> kind of, this is one over z, so raising everything to the negative one power, and then we have this finite sum running from k equals to one to n, off. Okay, and our to the negative set power turns into positive set. So we have 1 plus 1 over k to the set power over 1 plus z over k. And I thank you guys for watching. We are done. <laughs> so you see, we actually were able to drag our Weierstrass definition right here that I introduced to you guys back to our Euler Gauss whatsoever definition of the gamma function. And like I said, this one right here is really important. And in the next few videos, I'm actually going to introduce the digamma and polygamma functions to you guys. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And I hope you guys stay tuned and are waiting for the next videos, being pretty excited about the new topics that we are going to cover on this channel right here. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I create in the normal case, or you can support the channel on Patreon. This is not one of the t-shirts I created. And well, up until the next video, have a Gamma Day, my boys. See ya! Hello. Uh -huh.